Welcome all the Continuing the series of women in the Viking Age. And today we are going over the sources of the famous Shield Maidens. So most of you know my view on this, uh, but for this video I'm going to leave out my thoughts and uh, opinions and just go over the sources pretty much. Now I made this video specifically after I've done four other videos about women in the Viking Age and what their part of society was. Um, so I would rather you go back and watch those if you haven't seen them already, just so you can get a good idea of what the reality was like. Women were the utmost protected members of society, along with children, elderly, and even slaves actually. We do have a small handful of accounts of women fighting or being put in some violent altercations. But we have hundreds, if not thousands, of records of women being moved away to safety before the violence started. The men from both sides shouting to each other, Hey, hey! Let the women, let the women and children out! Get them away before we start slaughtering each other! Hey, alright! Okay, women, get out here! Get out to this! Alright, now we fight, okay? This is the reality. I've done so many videos on these attestations, and all you guys really have to do is read a few chapters of any Viking saga, and you will see this. This was the reality of the Viking Age. So, where do these shield maidens come from then, and how do they play into all this? How did they fit into this society? Heavily concerned with keeping women out of harm's way. So we're covering shield maidens specifically in this video. Shuldmad or Shuldmay uh, and the pure attestations of that specific word in the literature because this is something completely different than what you all know to be shield maidens and this video will clear a lot of that up. So the main point that you're going to see in this video is shield maidens are really only listed in the full mythological or semi-mythological sources. These are called the Fornaldasurgut, okay? Just like the uh, Valkyries or dragons, shield maidens appear only in the sources that the scholars have determined are not actual factual historical events. I don't quite agree with that, I think that's oversimplifying it uh, a bit. These mythological texts, or these Fornalda Sergud, um, they have some reality to them always. You know, dragons and Valkyries, you know, although they are symbolic in nature, they could still be connected to actual events or spiritual practices or rituals. See my video that I did uh, on that for a full explanation. Uh, but Shield Maidens, um, seem to be the same type of thing. They are symbolic and mythological in nature, but based off of, you know, somewhat real figures and practices in some distant past or even distant universe, but it's not a reality in the Viking Age. First example we have here in the Alexander Saga, an Old Norse translation of the epic poem about Alexander the Great, the Greek ruler um, for more than a thousand years before the Viking Age. And here the author who wrote down this book, this translation of the uh, you know Latin poem, this author in the 1300s uses uh, Shield Maiden as a translation for the Amazon women from the Greek mythology. So. You kind of get the idea right there. According to this source and a couple of others that I'm going to go over, the Shield Maiden was in about the same reality of an island nation of only women and no men who whooped men's asses everywhere they went and they went and gave birth somehow magically to children like Wonder Woman and Xena Warrior Princess, okay? Now, I'm not saying that these Amazon women of ancient Greece um, uh, didn't exist, because we have some historians in, in the Greek uh, literature and, and history that have shown some evidence that there could be some reality to these stories of the Amazon women. I'm just saying that it's generally regarded as myth and legend among the scholarly community, and here we have Amazons translated in this source, basically meaning uh, the exact thing as shield maidens. Also, what you will notice in uh, these sources, the records of shield maidens tend to pop up as women coming from the east, okay? Another saga uh, that has 
also regarded as mythological, is Oduvide Uds Saga. A Russian king named Hedoder has a shield maiden, actually, amongst his warriors. And this Russian king gives the shield maiden as a gift to Oduvide. Uh, Oduvide accepts the gift of the shield maiden just to be nice, but he ends up getting rid of her because she sowed some unimpressive athletic ability to cross over a swamp or a fen later on in the story. Also, this is the theme that kind of comes up. Um, female warriors existing in the east. But the Norse viewed this as a very strange thing. Like a shield maiden, a woman carrying weapons. What, what do I need this for? What am I going to do with her? Yep. Not my words. These are the words of the Norse sagas. You'll see another example here. In Ingvar saga, you will see a Swedish king who sent his son to the east where he met some Amazons. And note here that uh, Shield Maiden is not actually mentioned in this source, but it is translated that way uh, depending on the translation of this saga. We have another saga in uh, Buza Saga Og Hedoths. Now this saga is a bit different than the other ones uh, that I've gone over. A lot of the other legendary sagas we can kind of tie them into uh, real time periods and even some real humans that may have existed. Uh, but this saga here, uh, there's nothing like that and it seems 100% fictional. Uh, actually made up combining a few different fairy tales and legends uh, that would have been told at the time. So just be aware of that, but I included that in here. Uh, but here are a couple uh, other legendary sagas that we actually can possibly date to a real time period. One of them is the famous Hedvider Saga, um, the only real mention of a woman fighting alongside men in all, every single Norse source uh, is in this uh, saga, okay? Of course, uh, this is regarded as a legendary saga and not a uh, real uh, series of events, but it is linked to some real historical figures and events that may have taken place in the 400s or 500s. And this is really the only source. And that's what all the kind of TV shows and movies and games base this whole Viking woman warrior going out on an adventure and fighting and then shield maidens. That's where all this comes from in the Head of Aya Saga. But this is the only Norse source that really has anything uh, like that with a female uh, warrior as a uh, protagonist or adventurer. And by the way, in this source, Shield Maiden is only mentioned uh, one time in here, like you see in this text. Another very similar saga to this is Versunga Saga. Again, this is a legendary saga, but it can be possibly traced to some events that would have maybe happened in the uh, four and five hundreds. The Valkyrie here, Brynhildr, calls herself a shield maiden, but there are no other mentions of it in this story. But a parallel of this story is told about in some of the heroic poems in the Poetic Edda. And we call these the Helgileis or the Sigurd Cycle poems. Uh, one of them, this is actually the oldest one we think that we can date back to the uh, earliest time in the Viking Age. Uh, but the story, of course, tells of events that were supposed to have happened at the time of Attila the Hun in the 400s, 500s. And a couple times in here, shield maidens are mentioned, making it pretty reliable, but they call them the Huna Skaldmeyat, uh, so the shield maidens of the Huns. So this, and also Völsunga Saga, it was a tale of the Huns and the dealings with the Burgundians in continental Europe. It's preserved in Old Norse sources, yes, definitely, um, but it's not about Scandinavia. And there's nothing basically uh, tracing anything like shield maidens ever existing in Scandinavia at all, even in the mythological texts that I went over. We do have one record of kind of uh, shield maidens existing in Scandinavia involved in a battle, by the way. And that is in Gesta Danurium, which shield maidens or Amazons, as it's sometimes translated, they're, they're not mentioned by this title, but that's how it's uh, translated sometimes. 
happen in this text, uh, Saxo Grammaticus just mentions that there were a couple women who led some men into battle at the Battle of Brovelir. A woman actually did fight in this battle, by the way. Uh, she saw her favorite champion uh, got killed in the battle, so the woman rushed out there in anger onto the battlefield to avenge him. Uh, she got killed in about two seconds after inflicting a small wound on the man that killed him. So again, uh, this source is regarded also as very unreliable by uh, historians. I don't quite agree. I think there's some truth to it, and this battle did uh, possibly exist, but there's definitely vast over-exaggerations. For example, this battle was said to have hundreds of thousands of warriors, and that's about 20 times or more the size of any other real battles that we have records of from that same time period. But this same story is also accounted for in part in something called uh, Sögebult of Fornkundigum. And in this source, uh, they actually do use the word shield maiden to refer to these women who led uh, two bands of armies into battle. And this is the best and pretty much only source in a existence uh, that suggests that shield maidens were involved in battle in Scandinavia. And again, everything that I just went over, including these uh, latest uh, sources, are the semi-mythological or full mythological sources. So, do we actually have any sources at all that mention shield maidens taking part in real historical events recorded in uh, Scandinavia during the Viking Age or before or whenever, but coming from reliable sources? Kind of, okay? In Adam of Bremen's account, um, it's not regarded as the most reliable source, but it's generally believed to be true because it was recorded at the time when it was written and, and based on first and second hand personal accounts. It doesn't say shield maidens in here. Uh, again, it says Amazon uh, women, um, as usual, you know, something that Scandinavian royalty encounters on their trips abroad in this source. We do have another saga that is regarded as pretty historically reliable, and that's Jumsvikinga saga. Um, it tells of the Icelandic poet in the 10th century. His name was Einar Skallagram. Him, we know, existed. He was very, very real. And his nickname was said to be Skaldmeyar Einar, or Einar of the Shield Maidens. Um, what that means, who knows? Was he a skald that told tales of the shield maidens? Maybe it was only him who had this knowledge of these old tales in his head. Or was he maybe raised in a foreign country that was uh, thought to have shield maidens or Amazons, maybe the east of Europe or the Mediterranean or wherever? Or is the term shield maiden just a poetical metaphor here, you know, maybe referring to his style of storytelling? Who knows, but as usual, no shield maidens to be found in this source. We have another account of a saga that is also generally uh, regarded to be very reliable, and that's Sveri's saga. A real historical saga of a king of Norway in the 11 and 1200s. And in here, there is shield maidens referred to, but the shield maiden is the name of a ship owned by a man named Oim. So that's it, guys. There are no real historical sources we know uh, uh, being 100% or even 50% accurate uh, that mention shield maidens existing in Viking Age Scandinavia. Even in the legendary and mythological sources, when we do see mentions of shield maidens, uh, they're said to be of fictional events either coming from Scandinavia hundreds of years before the Viking Age or thousands of years referring to the Amazon warriors and ancient Greece or something like that, or just shield maidens from other countries. Like I said, Russia has numerous sources of something uh, referred to as shield maidens. That's the reality of it, guys, in the sources. Now, I'm not saying women didn't fight in the Viking Age. Of course they could have at some point. So we have sources for this, actually, of women involved in kind of violent confrontations, not battles, but yes, they did fight. Uh, and I do even think it's possible that women uh, accompanied men to battle on rare occasions. 
sometimes maybe to lead the army, sometimes even to give help and aid from the back of the battlefield. Maybe, I don't know, maybe something like the shield maidens would be responsible for bringing the shields out to the warriors, you know, in an equipment. You know, just like a beer maiden or an ale maiden brings the beer to the party, okay? I don't know, does that sound logical? Or do you think maybe it's more likely that beer maidens just strolled in there, tits out, cheersing everybody, drinking straight from the keg and all that like they do in these TV shows, aggressively taking over the beer hall? Huh. Doesn't sound very logical. But hey, look, I'm sure women fought in the Viking Age sometimes. Every creature with posable thumbs can pick up an object and start swinging it around. <laughs> oh, I'm funny. I had to throw in one joke there. I've been good. I really have. I did this whole video without uh, being uh, biased. You gotta let me have at least one joke at the end, okay? But I hope these sources have given you guys a better idea of shield maidens and the sources and what society back then was actually like. The next video, I'm going to go over the sources of women involved in violent altercations, and I will give my final biased opinions in that one. So that one will not be for the easily offended, but that one will come probably in the next couple months. But so I hope you enjoyed this one at least. That's all for today. Have you say us next again.